Good morning! And how are you doing today? Hope you're having a wonderful day. Now, today we are looking at Thailand's attempt to open up tourism with its Sandbox Plus scheme in Koh Samu. insurance that covers hospitalization with COVID and you must have had the vaccine. Now how does this sandbox plus thing work in Koh Samui? First you have to book at an AQ hotel or villa. AQ stands for alternative quarantine. This is different from your standard quarantine where you would have to stay in your hotel room. This means that you can actually the villa or hotel you're booked into you have free range of all the premises, all the facilities, and if they have beach access, the beach outside, uh, sorry, in their resort. So you can use the swimming pool, the gym, the restaurants, the spa facilities. You're not confined to your room, you're just confined to the place that you're booked in. On arrival day, you are taken straight to the hotel, you're checked in, and you must stay in the hotel, not just the room, the hotel premises, for the next three days. Day four, you're allowed to go on certain designated tours that are organized by your AQ hotel. Day seven, you have a COVID test. And if that comes back negative on day eight, you are free to explore the rest of Koh Samui, but also the neighboring islands of Koh Penang and Koh Tao. I think though there is some restrictions on it. You can't just travel by yourself, you have to take a designated AQ guide with you. So it's not going to be cheap. By day 14, you're then released into the wild and you're free to travel the whole rest of Thailand. Assuming, it, well, except for areas that may be shut down. But technically, day 14, you can travel the rest of the country. So, is it a good idea or not? Well, there are already a couple of issues coming on. It was only started on the 15th of July this year, and there's already a couple of issues coming up. Because flights in Thailand can only have 50% capacity, many of the airlines have now grounded themselves because they can't afford to go. So there's only Bangkok Airlines that are flying into Koh Samui, and those already expensive seats are up higher in price. So there's the expense of getting there. Then when you get there, the AQ hotels are not cheap. The cheapest I could find was 2,000 US dollars for the 14 days, up to 30,000 US dollars for an entire villa for 14 days. That does include meals. So it's not going to be for your budget travelers. You know, it's, yeah. Secondly, the point is how much of the island is actually going to be open? If you go there, okay, for the first seven days, you're confined to the actual um, resort. But then if you go and explore the island, what will there be open to explore? Now, if you're going to go on a holiday, say with your family, and you want to be in one resort, you generally stay in the resort with the kids, you access the beach, um, and that's what you want to do. This is quite nice because it's just like a normal holiday. But if you want to go out and explore the island, what will there be to do? Hmm. Thirdly, there is the changing quarantine regulations. In these uncertain times, this thing is, you know, mucked up travel and we just can't get a grasp of it and whether we should be traveling or not is another question for another day. But if you go there and you go through the quarantine process and then they change the regulations or they stop flights to the island entirely, then you could get stuck there. So you have to factor in that risk factor. Now, there are far worse places to be stuck. I mean, <laughs> it would be a wonderful paradise island to be stuck if your wallet can afford it. Let me know what you think of this kind of scheme. Is it practical? Would you go on one of those if you could? What do you think? Let me know and see you in the next video.